Hello, and welcome to the Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020 with your host, Armin Simonian. In the last episode, we talked about some computer basics defining data, and I want to continue with computer basics in this episode number six, talking more about programming and the interchange and exchange of data within our systems and with external systems. So let's jump right into the presentation and start talking about computer basics, um, focusing in on programming. So last time we talked about the prescription and how I use this as an example of how we might build our files, our database for our pharmacy information system. We talked about the linkage between the different files and tables. And then we talked about pharmacy information management systems, electronic health records. What I didn't mention was the uh, concept of a clinical data repository. This is where you don't have an integrated electronic health record. You have multiple independent systems, but you can pull in that all of that clinical data into a repository and work on sharing that um, separately. And then at the other end, after electronic health records, we can look at uh, the concept of a data warehouse. And that's where you have electronic health records, but you have maybe a different one for your uh, inpatients and a different one for outpatients. And then you wanna share information with external systems. And so that's where the data warehouse would come in. And I'm gonna talk about this more at the end of the presentation when I introduce the term interoperability. So what is a computer program? It has three pieces. It's uh, data structures, which we've kind of talked about already, the logical representation of data, and you have to define that up front when you're writing a computer program. You have to tell the computer where the data is, how it's stored and where it's stored. And then you have the algorithm, which is the sequence of instructions that will solve a given problem. So this is the programming logic that you're going to develop. Uh, in English and then uh, have a translator translate translate that into uh, computer language and then uh, we have the program so that's the algorithm and the appropriate data structures and those work together to solve a given problem so simplistically that is what a computer program is if you look at the types of instructions that we have when we write a computer uh, program, the computer can do a couple of things. It can do math, simple math, and all the mathematics that happen in the computer are uh, built on these simple math functions. And then we have uh, what we call conditional statements. So this is the if then else statement and loops, so a conditional statement kind of reads like this. If this condition is true, then do this. Otherwise, do this other thing. And then the loops are similar to that. So while this is true, do this. Or for this condition, do this. Or repeat this step until this condition is met, okay? And here I have a little picture of the original Apple headquarters and the address is one infinite loop. When we talk about an infinite loop, it's a loop like this where the condition is never met. And so the computer kind of spins forever and never stops. And that's a bad thing when you're doing programming. You never want to get into an infinite loop. So a little Apple humor there. All right, so uh, just as an example here, I wrote kind of a very simple program that looks at patient information on electronic health record and then tries to decide if we should pop up a warning to the prescriber at the time that they're looking at that patient's health record to notify them that it might be a good idea to give an influenza vaccine. So, um, Going to the CDC uh, guidelines, you can find charts for pediatrics and adults. And so if you look at the adult chart, you can look at the um, series of events, the warnings, 
uh, the indications for giving vaccinations. And so I did my research and I put together this little program. This is how it reads. We have conditional statements. So we start with our if, and then associated that is an then and an else. And this is indeed indented for the human to kind of understand and match these things up because we want all the if, then, and else statements to match up so that the looping is complete in all of these. The conditional statements have to be met. So you see that all of these line up. So going through this logic, we would start asking if the patient is uh, greater than or equal to 19 years old, and then if they are, then we're gonna go on to the next question. Otherwise, we're going to assume that this is a pediatric patient and we're going to refer to the PEDS guidelines. Going back to the next statement, if the patient has not received the vaccine this year, then we'll go on to the next step. If they've already received the vaccine, then we don't want to give it again. So um, we can just assume that it was given and not pop up the suggestion to give the vaccine again. Okay. If there's no latex uh, allergy, then we're good to go to the next question. Otherwise, we want to get out and make sure that we're able to provide a latex-free uh, alternative. Um, if the patient is not allergic to eggs, then we can proceed to the next step. Otherwise, we're worried about egg allergy. If they do not have a fever at this time, then um, we can go on to the next step. But if they do have a fever, we might want to wait to give the vaccine. If they're not anticoagulated, then, um, and you're looking to give an IM injection, um, you, can, you can proceed. But if they are anticoagulated, then you have to worry about uh, IM injections. So don't give the vaccine. If there is no history of Guillain Barre syndrome, then we can proceed. Um, and we can show the alert after all of this saying, hey, uh, we recommend ordering a influenza vaccine for this patient. Otherwise, um, we can alert saying do not give the vaccine or we can just let the prescriber go on with no messages. So just to give you an idea of what a computer program might look like in terms of writing the program itself, this is kind of the backbone of the logic and above this, you would see the identification of the data structures and um, other information that's involved with specific programming languages. But this gives you just a, a general idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about an algorithm. So the other thing that we're concerned about with uh, pharmacy informatics is that we want to have communication standards. Want to have communication standards so that when we've built our electronic health records and all the files and RICs, we have all that data in there, and we're getting to the point where we want to share data between systems, then we need to have a common language that all the computer programs speak so that we can interface them to each other. And the um, interface standard that's been used for many years is HL7 health level seven, and this is what provides the framework for most of the interfacing that happens between systems um, in the modern age. We have medication terminology standards too. So the NDC number, the National Drug Code, is actually a medication terminology standard. So we can key off that NDC number and um, build that into our systems, as I discussed in the previous uh, session about building the drug file, you saw that the NDC was included there. Um, another standard for medication terminology, now a newer standard, is Rx norm, and this is something that goes a step beyond uh, NDC number and uh, adds more of a clinical um, perspective to the NDC or to the individual drugs and drug names. So. Um, that's a newer standard that you should be aware of. 
And then we have medical terminology standards also. So you'll hear about SNOMED, and this is nomenclature, uh, clinical terms, so standardization of uh, medical or clinical terms. And then we have something called ICD-10. So there's been different versions of ICD, but we're up to version 10. And um, this is an international classification of diseases. So you can code diseases, you can code medical terms so that when the computer systems talk to each other, they're speaking a common language. And what are we trying to do? What's our, our end goal with all of this? Um, we want our systems to be integrated. Obviously, within our electronic health record, we want the lab system to talk to the pharmacy system, to talk to the nurse documentation system, and uh, the electronic prescribing uh, by our uh, providers. And externally, we want to be able to interface our electronic health records to things like uh, smart pumps or to automated dispensing cabinets where we want to have a interface. We want the two machines to talk to each other and um, we need to have HL7 or a common standard or language so that that can happen. And eventually we want interoperability. So we want all systems, all electronic health records in the United States and hopefully eventually worldwide to talk to each other and this can include uh, physician practices, hospitals, clinics, uh, health plans, um, all these folks who have information about the patient and have data that's related to their uh, health, their health record. We want to be able to have everybody talking to each other, have a health information exchange somewhere out there in the cloud as represented here so that no matter where you are as a patient anywhere in the world, eventually, if you need medical care, somebody at that point can access your health records and treat you appropriately. In the next session, I'll start talking about electronic health records, and I'll mention some of these principles as we get into that and dive a little deeper into interoperability. But for now, these are the two sessions on computer basics, and I hope that they've given you a good perspective on what kind of happens in the, on the IT side behind the scenes, uh, some of the terminology that's used so that you can understand uh, what the programmer is doing and understand what the IT folks are doing uh, on a daily basis when they look at computer systems. So if this was helpful to you, please go ahead and like this video and um, subscribe to the channel. This will encourage me to continue on with this series and cover more topics in the basic education of pharmacy informatics. And with that, I will say stay safe, stay healthy, look after the health of others, and um, I'll see you next time. Take care.